like to take a moment to test for picture and sound. So if you can hear my voice and see the projection in the room, please say hello and let us know where you're joining us from. All right. Sounds like I'm coming in loud and clear. Thank you for confirming that for me. Uh, my name is Danielle Yeager, and I'm joining from the Ninja Trader Ecosystem Business Development Office here in Denver. And we have a great event for you today with Jordan Schleider of the NQ Trader. All right, before we get started, I do want to go over a couple of things. And the first thing is. How are you currently using NinjaTrader? Now, while you fill that out, I would like to mention that it is important to understand that there are substantial risks in trading commodity futures contracts. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and will depend on your specific circumstances and financial resources. It is possible to lose all funds deposited with your broker and could even incur losses beyond these amounts. Please inquire at brokerage support at NinjaTrader.com for more information or for a copy of the CFTC full risk disclosure. Also, please remember that these trading webinars are not a solicitation nor recommendation, but simply educational in nature. All right. Let's go ahead and take a moment to review these poll results. Uh, it looks like we're right at 50-50. Half of you guys are uh, trading with a lifetime license, and the other half are uh, trading with a free simulated license. Oh, and looks like we've got a few people adding in that they're leasing a license. So it's a good mix in here. Now, just in case any of you did not uh, take a moment to fill out that poll, I would like to mention that NinjaTrader is free for advanced charting, market analytics, automated strategy development, connecting to a live data provider, and simulation trading and we only charge for our product if and when you're ready to decide to trade live through any of our supported brokers and as I mentioned earlier if you haven't already done so you can download Ninja Trader right here it's going to come with a free simulated license so next time we ask that question you can answer one all right, I'm going to go ahead and close that out for now. Thank you for participating. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and hand the microphone over to Jordan Schleider of NQ Trader as he reviews uh, price action trading for us. Uh, go ahead and take it away, Jordan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulty, so I'm just going to raise the curtain for just a moment while we try and figure out what's going on. Uh, if you don't mind, hang in tight for just one moment. Thanks.
Hello, can everybody hear me? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I've done a few of these webinars before, and that's uh, the first time that's happened, so I apologize. I don't know what exactly it was, but I'm sure it was something in my computer. Um, anyway, so let's get started. Um, my name is Jordan Schleider. Good afternoon. I hope everybody had a good um, down day today in the futures market. Uh, I just want to tell everybody a little bit about myself and a little bit about what I'm going to do. Um, I can answer questions at the end, and if I see them come across the screen fast enough, I will try and answer them during the trading. Um, so I've been trading myself over 20 years. I've been teaching about five. A um, lot of different results for me, I'm sure, same as with everybody. Um, we all started out at some point, you know, having a lot of problems trading, and then somewhere along the line, we figured it out or we didn't figure it out. And... Um, one of the reasons I like to teach is because I did figure it out. Uh, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy giving back. Uh, it really makes a big difference when you figured something out and you can actually teach people about what you're doing. Um, I also want to thank NinjaTrader and NinjaTrader Brokerage and Danielle for sponsoring me. Um, I've been working with them for quite a few years now. I do enjoy working with them as partners. Uh, I love their product. I use it all the time. And... Um, I can't say enough good things about it. So one of the main focuses of uh, the webinar today is um, going to be my school and um, what I teach. Uh, primarily, I teach price action trading. Um, it's a, a form of uh, technical analysis, and we focus on scalping or very, very short-term trades, um, fixed targets, all rules-based. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, I'm going to give, um, give you a kind of an overview, and then we're going to actually go into some uh, detailed trading days. I'll, I picked out a week of trading just to show you a little bit about how it works, and we'll talk about the trades, um, and uh, I'll actually give you some stuff you could possibly look at and, and see it, uh, on your screen at some time. Okay, so... Um, a couple of things um, I'd like to talk about. Um, this isn't really going to be a sales webinar. And I, I just say that at the beginning because I've been to a bunch of webinars before, and, and many, many of them out there are sales, and, and I'm not a real good salesman. I'm more of just a trader, and um, I'm pretty technical. So, you know, when it comes to the selling part, I'm not very good. <laughs> but, you know, that's okay. So you guys might benefit from that a little bit more by actually watching. You'll, you'll, a lot of people tell me I talk too much in um, my presentations. So anyway, um, another thing I'd like to say about the system that we trade and technical analysis, it's not an automated system, okay? It, it definitely takes some work to learn. Okay, um, there's nothing about it that's automated. Uh, it's, it's not a robot or a black box. I don't necessarily believe in those. Um, I think they're just ways to make you lose money. Um, so going on with that line, you know, the system isn't super easy, but it's not super hard. It also, it works, which is, you know, kind of amazing. And if you spend the time and you learn it, you can actually trade and, and make money, you know, and that's one of the things that, um, you know, I like to push is that, you know, if you stick with me and um, you you learn a little bit about what I'm teaching, uh, you will you will actually be able to make some money down the road, or a lot of people do. Um, some of my current and past students are, are obviously in the room. I see a few of them in there, and um, I recognize some of your names. Uh, you know, I appreciate you guys all being there, and, and they all know this also. You know, it's, it's easier for me to show than it is to actually talk about it. So that's going to be the primary um, focus of, um, of the webinar. Now, again, as far as questions go, I will uh, try and answer the questions if I can see them. Uh, and if not, I can answer them afterwards. Uh, I can also invite everybody here to come into a free group or two. Uh, we do all kinds of um, open teaching. Uh, everybody's welcome. And again, they're real groups, real classes, not... Um, not nothing is uh, sales oriented. Okay, um, so the best way I found to present, 
uh, is I usually work through charts a couple at a time and talk about how we trade and the trades. Uh, I use a PowerPoint presentation. And then I um, save a little bit of time at the end, and I, I do a market replay of a day so you can actually visualize some of the trades. Um, you know, that that's, uh, that's the best way to actually go through it. And, um, you know, during that time, we can, you know, again, do some questions and answers. Okay, so uh, to give you a little bit of background about how we're trading, we're trading off of a five-minute chart, and um, we trade the NQ, the NASDAQ 100 futures index. Um, we trade off of horizontal support and resistance areas, okay, and we trade reversal patterns, and I'll explain all those in a few minutes. Um, all the trades we take are rules-based. Okay, so everything we do has a rule. There's there's nothing left uh, to guess. There's no subjectivity. You know, uh, when you first start out trading, um, you're presented with with the rules. Uh, they they are complex. There's a lot of different combinations, and um, you know, we work with you for a period of time until you're uh, comfortable with trading the rules and and following the rules. Um, in classes and groups, we focus on the trades and the rules around them. Uh, I like to tell everybody it's not rocket scientists, but there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of rules. You know, it's definitely not an automatic system. Okay, so I'm going to click through to the next slide. And um, if you've seen my website before, you've probably seen, you know, some of my results posted. And I, I, I post results for a whole trading day. Okay, and a lot of people ask me, well, you know, do you actually trade that? No, I don't actually trade 13 hours a day. Okay, it's, it's virtually impossible. I usually trade about two or three hours and pick up anywhere between, you know, five and ten trades. Okay, my results are typically 80 plus percent. Okay, um, the average three-hour period, we see about ten trades. This is a five-day week. This is the week we're going to look at, and these are the results for every single day. Uh, we had 41 trades, and this is between 3 a.m., the London Open, up to about 4, 4.15 p.m., the regular close. Okay, and these are the amount of trades we see every day. It's somewhere around 40 trades. Okay, and we produce about 80% accuracy, usually a little bit more. We had a, a day with 93%, and we had a day with 75%, but, you know, overall, it's, it's usually always... Um, it's, it's always like that. These, these are the trades, okay? And um, when I talk about the ticks, okay, I, I break it down. Every, everybody's going to have a little bit different results based on your speed, your accuracy, your fills. So it's a little difficult to just put average ticks. If I was going to put what I trade every day, you know, you would see my results. You'd see four trades a day, and you'd see you know, four winners, or you'd see five or six trades, and you'd see five winners. You know, those are my results, and I could put down the tick totals. There is a place on my website where I actually post my results, but I don't get around to them every single day. I try to keep up as best I can. But I like to explain this so people understand what they're, what they're seeing here and not thinking that we're trading um, 41 trades in the course of a day. Okay, we're trading, you know, I, like I said, I... I shoot for, uh, we have money management goals and targets, and, uh, you know, those targets are about three hours of trading and no more than that, no more than 10 trades, and usually you pick up around 80%. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into the trades, okay, and, and talk a little bit about, um, a little bit about the trades. Uh, one of the trades we trade is very simple. It's an EMA trade, okay, and we trade off a 20-period EMA. Um, and, you know, just to give you an example, we have fixed targets and stops, okay? And um, when, when we hit a, a, an entry, okay, which would be this EMA line up here, um, we're looking for eight ticks profit, okay? And that's our fixed profit. And we have a 12 tick stop loss, okay? So regardless of it's short or long, we're looking for an eight tick profit and a 12 tick stop loss, okay? And, and that's our goal on every trade. And... Um, we, we have negative indicators is what I call them that keep us out of certain trades. So not every EMA is a possible trade. Um, if you look on here, 
um, what you see is um, an EMA, and then you see another possible EMA here and another possible EMA right after it. Well, it, it wouldn't really make sense to be able to take EMA after EMA after EMA. So, you know, again, we have rules that keep us out of those, specific rules um, for every scenario. Okay, another trade we take is called a horizontal resistance trade. Okay, and these horizontal resistance trades are um, based off of yesterday and last week's uh, highs and lows. Okay, we, we have um, seven lines approximately that we trade off of. And uh, when we expect the price to come up and hit a line, as you can see right here, um, we would um, look for a ticks profit or on the other side, a 12 tick stop loss, whichever comes first. And um, very, very simple trade. The lines, nothing's proprietary. Uh, they can easily be set up with horizontal lines with Ninja. Um, nothing tricky about setting them up. And um, we look for those trades. And again, the negative indicators, the rules come into play here, and they would stop us from taking a trade if a certain combination set up. Okay, so another very easy one uh, to see. Um, trend line trades. Okay, and, and this is a little bit more complex, but again, um, we draw trend lines, and what we do is we look for micro trends. You know, a lot of people have seen trend lines, and you can look at any chart and notice trends. Well, we're actually looking for um, ideal days or days when we have congestion, flat days where the price is only moving a few points up and a few points down, you know, maybe five, ten points up, about five, ten points down at the most, you know, uh, very, very small moves. And we try and capture small trends, and that's what you see right here, okay? You see a trend line, and the price would come down and hit the trend line and then reverse off of it and go up, okay? And um, again, we're looking for 8 ticks profit or 12 tick stop loss. Uh, we have a lot of rules, again, regarding trend lines, how to draw them, what we're looking for. Um, you know, in this little segment of chart right here that you see, um, these are all winning trades. There's actually, uh, here's a losing trend line trade right here, marked with the red X. Okay, so, um, you know, it's, it's a fairly uh, easy system to grasp at the beginning, but there are a lot of details, and the details are what I teach in the class. Okay, so this is a trend line trade. Um, another trade we take is called a double top, double bottom trade. It's more of a momentum trade and we're looking for a specific configuration of candles where um, we have a, a lower low or possibly a higher high on the upside of the market and um, a certain combination of these candles triggers off this trade okay and um, it's it's got a few variations there's three variations to it and it's also a short and a long trade and again um, we look for um, an entry into this trade, this double bottom flag that you see right here. And um, we look for the price to run up and we're looking for an ATIC profit again. Everything's the same. Okay, not much change from um, one to the next. Okay, and um, oh, hang on a second. I hit that twice. Okay, so that's, that's the gist of the trades. Um, I'm not going to go into too many of the rules now because, again, the rules are, are there's a lot of them, okay? And um, I could talk about them for hours and hours and hours. Um, so we're just going to pop right in and start looking at some charts and um, talk a little bit about what we see here. Now, um, typical day... And uh, we had 41 trades this day. We had 34 winners and uh, seven losses, 83%. Now, again, this is a 13-hour day, okay? I don't expect anybody to be able to sit in front of their computer for that. In fact, um, I found it took a, quite a bit of time to be able to master three hours. You know, sometimes I could sit for about four, but that really does me in. About, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable trading an hour and a half to two hours, um, three hours, and, and I leave myself windows to trade. So 
let me talk a little bit about Windows because it's a it's kind of an interesting concept. Um, it it goes along with uh, setting goals and targets. Okay, I, I know statistically that um, I get about ten trades every three hours, and I win about eight out of those ten, and that's a good profit area. Um, seeing that we're trading uh, fundamental or technicals, I'm sorry, we don't trade fundamentals. We avoid any kind of fundamentals. So I'm marking my chart with um, government reports, uh, things like the open I want to be aware of, the close of the market, any kind of speeches, FOMC or otherwise, I want to have marked on my chart. And, and as you can see down here, there's a little R. You know, the R signifies a report at 8.30. So on a typical day like this, I'd want to be out of the market before 8.30. And I don't want to trade between 8.30 and 9.30 because I got about an hour in there and I hit the open and the volatility really cranks up for the open. So, you know, I'm looking for a three-hour period to start anywhere around 3 a.m. that finishes me up by 8.30. So I could start at 4.30. I could start at 5.30 even, and I'd be out of the market before the report started to hit. And that's fairly typical. A few days we have some 7 a.m. reports, but 8.30 is, is it. I don't want to be trading in that our last hour corridor right there. You know, if there was no reports at 8.30, I could probably trade through to about 9.15, but I certainly want to stop at the open. I don't want to be anywhere near the market at the open. We don't trade the open. It's too volatile. Uh, technicals don't really work. It's all just driven off of emotion. Typically, we go back up and down, and the slippage is so high, it's impossible to make money. After the open, uh, it really starts to fill in and smooth out nicely. You can still have some volatility, but, you know, good trading. And then, again, through the afternoon, which is a great time to trade, you can get great movement in the afternoon. Um, but once again, you want to allow yourself a three-hour period. Not that you're going to have to trade three hours, but you want to allow yourself a three-hour period. So you don't want to start trading at 3 o'clock. That gives you an hour and a half to trade. So as you can see here... Um, we start out early in the morning, the market's rising. We pick up, these red arrows and green arrows are actually trades, by the way. They're all entry points. And um, we pick up three in a row, and then you hit a loser, and then you pick up uh, two more. It's a little slower in the pre-market. Um, pick up another one here, a couple more trades. These are horizontal resistance trades and EMA. And we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail on market replay on the last day. Um, I just wanted to kind of guide you through this so you can get used to what we're looking at on a chart. We're drawing the trend lines all through here real time, and um, everything's real time. There's no indicators that are telling us when to get into trades. When we hit a trend line, when we hit a support and resistance area, when we hit um, the EMA or when the double top, double bottom sets up, that's when we would take the trade. Okay. So... Um, We'd work through the day, whatever period of time it was. You look for your trades, you make your money, and you're out. Okay, so again, this day was uh, 41, 34, and 7, 83% overall good results for the day. Okay, um, this is Tuesday, the next day, and I think we're, um, we're on this contract. It was 623, so it was just the beginning of the contract that I pulled the days out. Um, flat morning, okay, um, same same thing, good trading in through here. You can see a number of um, entries all through here, and every one of them is an eight-tick profit. That's what we're looking for. These blue dots are what we call near misses. They're um, one of the negative indicators that tell you not to take a trade. Okay, so um, a combination of blue dots can tell you um, not to do that, and that's manual. You're just basically counting the ticks. Um, away from a trade. It's, it's, it's called a near miss because it's almost a trade, but it's not. And if it happens, you just uh, avoid that indicator, that line or that horizontal resistance, whatever it is. So we had a real good morning here. We had two reports around the 8.30 corridor, 8.15, 8.30. Um, I don't think we had a loser until we hit right after the open in this high volatility um, segment right in here. It's hard to really tell without my crosshairs, but it looks like about 9.45, we hit a loser. Uh, we were good all the way through, and then right here, you see this X4? This is actually a loser also, but it's only a four-tick loser. 
Okay, and one of the things I talk about, the, the near misses in the trades and the negative indicators, they can actually pull you out of trades a little early. So they can save you from a trade that might have been a whole, a complete loss. You know, the trades interact with each other. It's important to understand that. We're not just trading uh, a horizontal line or an EMA. That would definitely not work. So um, this right here is, is, is just a four-tick loser versus a 12. And then we had another loser um looks like around 130 or so and then the rest of the afternoon was really good so y this isn't the average okay this is not the norm we don't see 93 percent every day we see 80 percent 82 84 somewhere in those numbers uh if you look back through my stats and my newsletters if you watch and follow me you you'll see on the average for the month we end up about 82 84 percent in that range we don't end up with 93 we do occasionally get um, a perfect day. We had one, I think, last month, but it's it's very rare. And you know, the '90s come once or twice a month. It's it's an 80% game. Okay, here's um, an 88% day, and um, what you see in here is flat, some good trend lines, and these trend lines can work their way all the way across, and you can actually get trades hours later off of them. We're trading and building them off of what I call micro trends, you know, very, very short distances. You know, I have a, a, a limit to the distances I draw these, um, but uh, they can extend out forever and only through the day, and they can get hit much, much later, which, you know, is really interesting and, you know, shows the power of, of these trend lines. Um, these purple arrows were just to, uh, me doing some teaching uh, recently, and I left them on this chart. So um, we were talking a little bit about it, but oh, excuse me. Okay, and um, we had a big spike up right around the open in here, as usual, report at 830. You know, this is fairly common. Um, and, and we trade through all this. The, the only thing that really kind of throws us off are fundamentals and um, the things that come along with them. Typically, when you see fundamentals, you're going to see excess volatility or, you know, huge volume. So those are the things that we want to watch out for. If there's a report, you know, we could be trading 500, 300 contracts in a bar, and then all of a sudden we go to 2,000. And, you know, it's the same with the open. We go from a couple hundred contracts up to 10,000 contracts through the open and then quickly it settles down um, so again you know uh, another day we'll just go through these you know one at a time and I'll just kind of talk a little bit about them as we're going um, it, this is not so good of a day and you know I threw it in there this is the next day of the week this is Wednesday and um, you can see we're down to 75 percent 36 trades 27 wins six losses now if, if you understand the inverse trading ratio about this, you'll understand that, you know, 50% is not the break-even number. We're really, in, you know, in the 60s. So 75%, you still make money. 80% um, you make money also. You know, you don't want to be down in, in like the 62, 63 range. Um, that's, that's where you're starting to, you know, break even or maybe, I think it's like 62, you start to lose a little bit. Um, so you can see we had a little bit rougher of a day overall, but there was good trading sessions, okay? And if you avoided the volatility, you could have had a pretty good session in here. And, and why I say that is that if you look here in, in the early morning, okay, there was obviously something going on right here. And um, I don't have it charted on here, but you can see this kick up. This is not normal um, for a 3 a.m. chart. You don't see this kind of volatility, and then it comes right back down. So you pick up three losers right in that period, in that 3 to 6 a.m. time frame. And, you know, you would avoid anything like that, you know, because of the volatility. And after it settles down right in here, you know, about 7 a.m., you have a window and you pick up some decent trades, but it's still, you know, a little uncertainty. And then the open, you can see it slams down. So a lot of days that we get with this high volatility, I usually encourage people to just stand aside until they see something that really looks good. And what that is is some decent price action, some decent trading. The volatility slows down and um, things even out. You start to get possibly a trading range where you have trend lines building on either side. But, you know, with this day, we just didn't really have that. 
Okay, we didn't really have the horizontal resistance trades. We had one way down at the bottom and one way at the top. So, you know, they were valid and they picked up some winners. You know, just not not a great day. You know, and again, you still made money. Okay, if you were very careful in here, you know, you could have probably picked up a good session and picked up three or four trades. And that that's one of the things we teach, that um, money management and risk management, learning when not to trade is so important. So critical in, in learning to trade. Okay, and then um, Thursday, uh, let's see, back up to 85%. You know, very, very similar looking. We had a nice range set up early off in the morning. And, you know, right in here, you have almost 10 trades in a row with no losers. Okay, great pre-market. And then, you know, the volatility kicks in a little bit around the 7, 8 o'clock corridor. Um, not, um, you know, same thing in the open, a um, lot of volatility in there. And then it moves down pretty fast. You're just not going to see a lot in these push downs. Okay, when we have strong push downs or strong push up, uh, you just don't see a lot of trades. Uh, one of the other things I teach is I teach a little bit of uh, swing and position trading in the class. And, you know, if we see some good setups, you know, I'll usually point those out to people. I think this was actually Friday, right, the 26th. Yeah, because I have one more slide left. And then, you know, it smoothed out in the afternoon, which is fairly common, and you see some good trading in there. Okay, and, you know, when we do have this high volatility, these big down pushes or the big up pushes, and we don't see a lot of trades, you know, we do some things, um, uh, position trades, swing trading, but they're all shorter term. We're looking for interday stuff. Uh, um, you know, my primary focus is um, interday trading, um, in and out, uh, nothing long term, never holding trades overnight. Most of the trades go to target within a few minutes or some even a few seconds. Um, even the swing trades are tend to be 10 or 15 minutes. Um, these position trades, uh, another thing I like to teach, uh, we look, these are big point totals. We don't see them that often, but they're kind of fun to take when there's nothing else going on. You can see a big drop down and pick up a 28 point trade off of something like this. We had, uh, a couple big ones today set up in the market and you know the trading wasn't too good this afternoon it was just straight down there was no place for price failures or trend lines or anything like that okay so um that's the focus of the slides uh now what i'd like to do is uh bring up market replay uh talk in a little bit more detail about um let's see if i can find it here how the trades work and actually walk through. <sighs> okay. And then we'll do some um, question and answer. Okay. I, I do a lot of teaching in the evenings on market replay. And um, one of the things that um, I found it's, it's, um, it's a really good tool for showing people what's going on, okay? And right here, we actually just had a trade off of horizontal resistance, okay? And this was just after 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and let me just mark it here so you can see it, okay? And what we were looking for is an entry, or this happened to be an early entry off of the gray line. And we have a trend line set up above us. Okay, and we're looking for a possible entry off the trend line. Okay, and, and I can speed this up a little bit, and um, hopefully I won't mess it up. Sometimes I bust through it pretty quick. Okay. That's about 10 times the speed. Okay, so we're waiting till we come up here and hit this trend line above us. Okay, and, and um, we would just be kind of hanging out. And it's a short trade we're expecting. Okay. Let me slow it down a little bit because, well. And there it is. There's your entry on the trend line.
And when the trend lines get hit, we only take one trade off of a trend line, so we cut it off. Okay, and now there's just a wait. Um, you have the opportunity uh, to trade off of an early entry. Uh, it scores still from the entry, and there's some variations to that. One of the reasons we do that is for scoring purposes. Okay, and I can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, it's it's fairly complex, but if this happens to come down here again, you can't trade it. Okay, and, and I, we got a few seconds before this actually goes to target, so I can talk about it without um, losing the trade. But what happens is if this if this event, this trade happens, and you do not take the trade because it's one tick away, you have to score it as a win and not take it again. See, one of the rules prevents us from taking two trades on the same indicator without a certain amount of bars that come into play. Okay, so in this case, um, the early entry is just one tick before the line. Okay, in this case, um, if this line came right down here and hit it again, you could not take this entry. So we score it as an entry so you can see it. Um, I think this thing already came to target. Well, it just came down seven. Takes a little bit. I think one more will be eight. So, uh, and again, you know, there's there's not much discretion in this system, but you have to understand these rules. These rules are critical, and you have to um, play by the rules. I understand not taking the retest and the second test of the gray line, but how do you justify calling it a win? Well, if you took it, because some people will actually take it, okay? Some people actually take early entry trades, and you just have to understand that if you're going to take an early entry trade, you're only making seven ticks. Okay, there's a variation there. And if you only make seven ticks on every trade, you um, are giving away profit. And the other thing about giving away um, profit like that, there's slippage tends to be higher when you enter a trade early. If you wait until it actually hits your target, you're not going to have that issue. In fact, sometimes you have positive slippage if it goes through. Um, in a case like this, let me slow this down down. You're, um, you're asking a lot of good questions, David, and, and they're fairly advanced. I get um, most of the people coming in to these um, sessions are, uh, are not familiar with the type of trading we're talking about and, and we're going over their head. So I, I want to be careful not to um, push too hard. Okay, um, let's see if I can speed this up and show you a couple more trades. I think we have, well, it's a little slow in the morning. Let's buzz through here. Okay, so just quickly, we have a near miss here and a possible second near miss setting up right there. Okay, and here's a possible trend line coming up. Oh, sorry, I got the wrong indicator. We draw these trend lines from price failure to price failure. Okay, and let me speed up just a little bit more. And David, if you want to give me a call or, you know, come into a free room sometime or a group, you know, we can go over a lot of the details in there. Sometimes it's a little easier if we have a little time. I have two hours in the groups, and um, you know, like I said, everybody's welcome into the groups. We're really tight on time here. I only have about five minutes left, so um, I just want to at least show everybody one more trade. Now, these are not um, EMA trades. Actually, I'm sorry. This was an EMA trade right here. I buzzed right through that going market replay. So there's an EMA short right there. Um, actually, no, that is not. There's a negative indicator that would keep us out of that trade, and same with this one. Okay, so you couldn't take that. So all you're waiting on is the trend line. It takes a little bit of focus to do this, and when I'm talking and um, running market replay at 10 times the speed, I tend to um, make mistakes. 
But when you have a little bit of time to examine these, what we we're looking for is a certain pattern here. And this trade needed to come down to a certain point before it came back up. So it keeps us out of this EMA trade right here. That would not be a good trade. Um, it's one of our rules. And now we're waiting on this uh, possible trend line trade here. Okay. And that was two ticks. So that's a potential near miss again. We do not have a trade on the gray line. Okay. And there's your entry. Right there. Okay. And if the gray line was active, this could actually change our target. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, it is. I'm sorry. It is active. Hang on. One. Nope. Wrong again. Okay. That near miss is there. And this is one, two, three, four. So if any of you guys from the room understand, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And again, we, you know, we cover a lot of this in class. Okay. So now we're just working with the trend line. Let me speed it up a little bit. And um, what I'll do is I'll buzz through this last trade. We're going to run out of time, and I'm going to do questions and answers. So we can see this. And what we're looking for is if this thing comes against us, 12 ticks, it's a loser. If it goes in our favor, okay, it's a winner. One or the other. Entry was at 41.50, 38.75 is 11 ticks. Okay, so it only went 11 ticks against us. It's still a viable trade. Okay, we're looking for negative 12 or positive 8. I'm going to have to really speed it up because what it actually does is it comes up quite a bit farther out. And um, there's another little it's interesting situation. It reverses off the EMA, and you're going to see it right here. So that's the reversal, and it ends up being just a two-tick winner, and then the EMA actually goes to target right there. So there's your trade. Okay, I'm going to pause it now. Um, we don't have enough time to really go through too much of this. I kind of explained some trades, and because of my little mess up at the beginning, I think I lost a few minutes. So, um, you know, we can do some quick questions and answers. Again, um, everybody's welcome to um, come into the room. All you have to do is shoot me an email or, um, okay, I can, you know, I, I just cover this last few things and, you know, kind of wrap it up if we have a little bit of time. I'll do some question and answers. Um, uh, it's the price action course. Uh, it's a four-month class. Uh, that's usually what I um, focus on with people, but I do a lot of um, other individuals. Evening, I have an evening course and a morning course. The morning course is um, more of a live trade room, but we, we do a combination of both in both classes. Um, Anybody that uh, was in the webinar, uh, if you just take the exit page and you uh, sign up, you're welcome to get a $100 discount uh, on the price of the course. Uh, we also have some um, financing specials going on. So if anybody's interested, we take credit cards. That's my big sales <laughs> speech for the day. We can do um, a 50-50. Uh, well, you know, I'm looking for a teacher. If anybody wants to teach my options class. <laughs> I don't have time. Um, you know, I've I've had somebody teaching it before, and um, it kind of goes back and forth. Yeah, exactly. I'm a smaller school, and um, you know, it's it's tough to keep employees, uh, quality employees that are good teachers. Okay. Uh, so anyway, any other questions? Anything else that's coming up as far as um, what people are thinking? 
hundred dollar discount to anybody that wants to join the class. Everybody's welcome to try for free. Um, we're always doing demos uh, of classes and groups, so you can always hop in anytime you want. Um, uh, I think uh, Ninja Trader does a recording and puts it on YouTube. And uh, like I said, again, you're always welcome to hop in to a free group. Just uh, shoot me an email uh, anytime you want, and um, you're, you can pop in for free. Um, where do we go? What's your email? Let me bring up the slide again. There you go. Okay, and there's my email info at nqtrader.us, my phone number. Anything else? Okay, you're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, well, we'll wrap it up for today, and you know, once again, um, Thanks again to Danielle. Thanks again to uh, Ninja Trader, Ninja Trader ecosystem. I really appreciate these um, opportunities to present, and um, I'll let you take it over, Danielle. Well, thank you so much, Jordan, for such a great presentation, and we'll definitely be having you in the room in again. Definitely uh, check out nqtrader.us or email. Jordan at info at nqtrader.us. If you think of any questions a bit later or you didn't get your question answered today, uh, and happy trading from all of us here at Ninja Trader Ecosystem.